We are recording. Welcome to the Speak to Sell Yourself and Your Business show. Super excited to be here. Remember, this is your community. If you want to speak up, if you want to become a confident speaker, if you want to use speaking to sell, to stand out, to connect, to deliver your greatness, this is the community for you. If you want to start challenging your limiting beliefs, your thinking, improving your language, adding value through your accent. Yes, we all have accents on this call today. Yes, believe it or not. Yes, we do. And so do you. This is the place for you. Okay. And we are growing. We are excited. We are inspired. And today we have Amisha Joshi. And before I pass on the mic, because we're going to have a conversation. Well, second, itchy nose. I always get itchy nose when I come to this show. It must be something. I get overexcited. Nothing that I do with my nose. It's just maybe the coffee. Okay. Anyway, what was I saying? What was I saying, people? We've got Amisha Joshi today. I met Amisha years ago during our NLP master training, neurolinguistic programming. If you don't know, we can do a session around that as well. I briefly spoke about NLP and the communication model in one of the previous episodes. So you can go and watch, watch the replay. We met then, then we went to some retreats together as in for training purposes. There was no romance, not that kind of romance, just in case putting it out there. We know I'm married, Amisha's married. We have a very professional relationship. And we've been in touch, in touch since then. We've planned things together. We've launched a few things together as well. We've then taken separate journeys, come back, and here we are today. I'm going to change the view to speaker. So we get to see Amisha when she speaks and we can all focus on her. And then we're going to be asking questions and having a good time. Amisha, I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you so very much for being here with us today. It is a pleasure. Amisha is la leyenda. And she's going to be talking to us about emotional fitness. So let's just unpack all of that together. Over to you, Amisha, for an intro. And um, yeah, let's get down to business. I've got a few questions and I'm sure the audience has got questions as well. I'll stop talking. Please interrupt me now. Interrupt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Jose, Uka, Rashmi, Yunus, uh, fantastic uh, people on this program. And uh, you don't uh, want to say privilege. hello to her mom. I get it. I get I, it. Did I not say her mom? It's okay. I, I'll do the same. I'm sorry. I, the Uka I brother. Just leave. I, I, I'm going to. Uh, I'm just gonna be listening, okay? I'm not here. I just take my camera. So it's, it's a very special hello to Herman. Uh, I've always told Jose he's he's the more mature of the two brothers. Nah, just pulling his leg. That, that's just true. Just pulling Jose's leg. It is true. Yeah. So I, I I take these little liberties because, as Jose said, we uh, we've grown together from our NLP days, and uh, you know, with some people you have the rapport and you can take that little bit of privilege, right? So once again, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, super delighted to share on emotional fitness to everybody in this community. Uh, as Jose said, uh, we've uh, trained in NLP and I am a certified NLP trainer and a master coach. And the area of focus that I coach on is emotional fitness. Um, and I can share obviously tons of stuff on emotional fitness. Mm. Uh, but predominantly today we're talking about how it pertains to entrepreneurs and the what and the why and uh, you know the hows if, if at all um so jose would you like to lead the session you want me to just take let's, over what, let's have what, a conversation well if you feel like taking over yeah I'm, I'm good like that if you want to take over you can take over i i just had the you know the, the main question is would you would you like to tell us a bit more about this emotional fitness what you're angle towards emotional fitness is um I, i've got plenty of questions if you want me to ask some questions and then we have the conversation or maybe you take over halfway in whatever okay. let's play okay. let's play by ear so let's start with the what really in terms of emotional fitness um just in case i didn't mention to anybody i am based out of london uk so time zone wise if anybody needs to reach out uh, you know feel free but um the what about emotional fitness uh, is, um, let me just bring it up here. Yeah, I always compare it to our physical fitness because the word is, is fitness, right? Fit, it's about being fit, it's about being healthy. So when we talk about uh, our emotions, we say, what does it take to be emotionally healthy, right? We all have a clear idea about what our physical fitness is. 
I'm sure all of you have some kind of a regime or workout routine or, you know, healthcare uh, awareness, whatever it may be for yourself. Um, but when it comes to our emotions, we never really think about bringing them into a fitter space or making them healthier for ourselves because it's never something that is talked to us at all, right? Um, so what it is, it is really, let me bring up my textbook definition, is our ability to be resilient. It's our ability to be positive. It's our ability to be focused in any situation, right? It also means that you have the ability to change your emotional state with ease. Now we all go through different emotional states. We cannot always be in a happy state. We cannot always be cheerful, uh, unless we're like Jose, who's I've never actually seen him in any other different kind of a state, right? It, that, that's Jose because, is an exception, right? That's because right? We, are not, we are not married. So you should speak to my wife, Anna. <laughs> or okay. to his brother. Well, yeah. I'll, yeah. Or to, yeah. okay, I've, I've seen a bit uh, with his brother, yes. Sorry, my, I, I take my words back. I have seen Jose in a different emotional state other than cheerful and chirpy. Okay, so yes, so it's, it's about your ability to change from those negative states that we experience into the more positive, the productive, the progressive, the more action-oriented and the focused one, right? Um, and it's also the ability to just bounce back and come back to where you were so that you can keep carrying on and or even become stronger. So if you think about it, like, um, you know, I wish I shared in the introduction video that, you know, there are times where we get coughs and colds, yeah? And we because we don't have a level of immunity and that's why the body has been, you know, uh, attacked by a virus. Uh, but how well you recover from it is, is uh, the representation of what your physical immunity is. And it's the same thing with your emotions. Now, I'm sure everybody who is listening in, everybody who's watching in right now, everybody who will watch in on catch up, uh, I can see all of you all already thinking about, mm, you know, when was the last time I felt something? And when was the last time I felt really triggered? And how long did it take me to sort of come back, come out of that state and, and focus, carry on what I was doing or what I needed to do? Right. I can I can just sort of if I may read everybody's expressions right now. I can see Jose is already lost somewhere uh, trying to yeah, figure I'm, that one out. I'm looking I'm looking for for those moments when when I've yeah. experienced that and also when I've experienced them with other people. So how long it's taking them. So on, on that note, Amisha, how how long can this take? And now that we are speaking about this specifically, because I think it's, it is very important. I see many people and even myself in the past and in the culture I grew up in, being Latin American and everything, there is always a bit of drama around in human interactions. And I remember even my parents and people taking, deciding to, no, I'm not going to speak to you for over a year because of a certain encounter. Yeah, things like that. I'm not going to speak to him ever again. And, you know, I grew up around that. I don't do it, but definitely at some point I thought, wow, I mean, can I, can I overcome these situations on the spot or how long are they supposed to take? I'm speaking about human interactions here one-to-one, -one, but then apply to anything else in life. I've had a bad moment. I woke up feeling, you know, whatever. How can I change that around? I just want to do your things quicker because I, I don't think we have enough time. Time is limited. So uh, how are we yeah. going to, exactly, how can we do that? Over to you, think, just, you know, picking your brain. No, you're absolutely right, because we really don't have the time. And the questions that my clients always bring up is, well, what do we do in that moment? You know, we understand. We understand it fundamentally. But what do we really do when we're feeling down? Because the more you feel down or angry or frustrated or anxious or whatever you may label your emotions as, the moment you feel down, if it is not changed, you'll continue to get sucked in and you get into a downward spiral. Right. It's I mean, I can also compare emotions to like the flow of a river. If you if you let them, they will just flow and you know take course wherever they want to go. But if you direct the flow of the water to somewhere else where you really need it, you know, 
that that's where your intelligence comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So now about the speed or how quickly can you do stuff? You can do stuff very quickly. And the fact is to change how you're feeling is literally takes an instant. It takes, you know, less than a second. But where the challenge comes in is when people end up getting into the downward spiral and fail to recognize that they might be sliding down. And I wanna ask everybody who's listening and how many times have you have experienced that, that you are in a, a very undesirable emotional state and you find yourself getting further and further and further sucked into it because the feeling is followed by a thought and then the thought is followed by some kind of a belief and then the belief changes into your reality. Yeah. So everything actually really starts and ends with the emotion that you're feeling in that moment. Because it's not just about, I wake up feeling something and I want to change that around. It's, it's really about working with what's happening after that. Because if you don't bring awareness to those thoughts, if you don't bring awareness to the beliefs that they are leading to, that's your downward spiral. Okay. But the converse is also true that once you have a positive emotion and you work on it and you build it, you can move into an upward spiral as well. Okay. So Jose. Can, can you, yes. Gonna... I, I want to do more of that. I want to do more of that. And that's what I would love people, you know, when they go speaking and they expose themselves, put themselves out there in order to speak up all of that. And I just had a, a thing here. I mean, going back to the, to the ability of our brains, our mind in this case specifically, I can get upset like this. So I'm wondering, then I should be able, and I would like to be able to get, to be happy like this. You see, it's just like, you know, when I click my fingers, yeah, I got upset. Well, how can I just now change that? Over to you, Amish. I just, you know, just thought, yeah, I mean, if I get upset like that, then I should have, or I can have the ability to get happy or resourceful. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Because if we have the ability to get uh, triggered, we also have the ability to get into a positive state, right? Now, there are loads of different ways this can be done. And this is what we learn in NLP. This is what we teach in NLP as trainers as well, in terms of how do you work with that emotional state and change it around. Um, uh, would, would everybody be up for an exercise? Let's do a demo. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Right? People, people like to experience things because our emotions are experiences, right? They're not words, right? Okay, I'm ready. so let's think about um, a situation that triggers you. Do we, do we share it out loud or do we keep it? If you want to, if you want to share it out loud, that's absolutely fine. But if it's too personal, please do not. Rashmi, would you like to share something out loud? Because Rashmi, he's been, she's been sharing her stories, speaking up. She's, you know, she's on a fast track. I don't know where she's going. She's on an upward point. spiral. Yeah, she's mm. actually like, like a rocket. <laughs> Actually, um, it was regarding something. Hello. Rashmi, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we, hello. Okay, now now we're talking. Remember, if we cannot hear you, if I can hear you halfway, then <laughs> we can hear you, Rashmi. <laughs> okay, so it is about something relating to my family. So um, I wasn't agree to a point. Uh, some like activity, I wasn't agree at that point, and I just uh, took a stand for that. Uh, but the, my family members wanted to do that thing. So that thing triggered me. And next morning also, they asked for the same thing when I opposed it. And why are you asking me the same thing when I'm in the opposition of it? So that triggered me a lot. Yeah. So when you feel triggered, Rashmi, what goes on? So there might be two things. You feel something in your body and you hear something in your mind. Yeah. Right. There are two aspects to it. Some thoughts goes on, like, why are you doing this thing when I am opposing this? I am having some valid and logical point to oppose it. So why are you doing yeah. this? Yeah. So, so you can change one or both of what you're feeling, right? Now, you have a certain thought and you have that question in your mind in terms of why is it being repeated when I've already stood against it, right? And why is it coming back, right? Now, the second part is also how you've experienced that trigger in your body. 
because our emotions are felt through our body, right? They're not felt through our head. We can't feel an emotion in the head. We only feel it in our body. If you think about it, think if you if you really sort of narrow it and pinpoint it down. Yes. Yeah. Can you actually feel an emotion in your head? Yeah. Other than the, I mean, the angry <laughs> words. Yes. It was an anger inside me. It's an anger, right? Yeah. So where would you feel the anger? Body. Yeah. Where? Let's pinpoint it specifically. Uh, like it was a, a anger in my mood. Like I was just want to hit something or what is this or just oppose something that right? or shout. <laughs> If yeah. you say shout. Yeah, yeah. So it, the, the feeling of wanting to shout is really that because the anger is sort of sitting somewhere in that region. And that is why it, your body is, you know, telling you to shout. Yeah? Yeah. Now, a lot of our emotions are stored in our body. Now, how can you instantly shift this? How you can instantly shift it is when you have the feeling that you want to shout, you can either shout and let it out because it will be let out. But we also know the consequences of what happens when you shout and yell and then you know the trigger turns into a massive issue like what Jose was describing. You know, like what happens in his culture that suddenly somebody stops talking to the person for like a whole year, right? And we don't want that. So the idea is how can you positively release the emotion without getting more challenges in your life, right? So it's a very, very simple way that you can do this using, it's a very powerful NLP process that I love using. It's one of my favorites. But if you feel, wherever you feel the emotion in your body, I'd like you to just imagine that it's not a feeling, but it's an object. So can you do that? So the anger that you feel is not anger, but it's an object. Let's objectify it. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so what would you say that object is? A box. A box, okay. Now what I'd like you to do is, since you've objectified it and you made it into a box, it's no longer an anger, right? Because it's a box. Now I just said box and she's smiling already. <laughs> All I did was I just said box. So where is the anger now? <laughs> In the box. If it's in the box. That's brilliant. So you've put it in a box. Okay. Now, can you shatter that box? I can put a hammer on it. You can put a hammer on it. You can shatter the box, right? Now, when you shatter the box, it's obviously you shatter the contents as well. Yeah? Scattered. Scattered everywhere. So where is the anger now? Do you still feel it? It is released. It's released. Yeah. How long did it take? Five minutes, not more than that. Five minutes. We haven't even been speaking for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> five seconds, less than five seconds. That's because obviously we were, I was breaking it up for you and guiding you through the process. Yeah. Yes. So how quick was that? Jose, how quick was that for you? because you asked me for an instant solution. I mean, well, I, I was paying attention to what Rashmi was going through. So I would say a couple of minutes, really, when she actually just objectified it. And that was it. And then right away, I, I think she was already hammering it down. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, because Rashmi has never done this before and never known of it before, I was carrying her, I was taking her through the steps. But next time Rashmi needs it, you don't need me to take you through the steps. Your mind already knows that if it's an undesirable emotion, your brain already knows that, that I, I, I need to just change this because the emotion is not healthy for the body, right? And our brain and our body is always working towards survival. So the moment it recognizes that there's something that's not good for us, it's automatically won't, it, it will push you to change it unconsciously. It's already done. You don't need to come back to me for more information on how do I change it because your brain's already got it now, right? 
Now, this is, we're talking about one small instant, but this is one trigger that's creating a certain emotion. There could be other triggers, but they're creating other emotions for you. And especially in entrepreneurship, we know how challenging it can be to have to work alone, to have to do a lot of stuff that you need to do to build your business. And it can trigger all sorts of emotions, right? There can be fear, there can be anxiety, there can be self-doubt. How many of you feel that self-doubt in your entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey? Such a tongue twister. And, yeah. and our emotions can be a range, isn't it? It's never going to be just anger or just fear. It's never going to be like one of those big things. There can be niggles as well. There can be something that constantly comes up and annoys you and irritates you. So there are all sorts of things that can go on. And the important thing that you need is to know how to regulate those. Because if you let them stay, they build. Yeah? Would you go on, Jose? coming in with a question I can see. Um, no, I just wanted to highlight the power of this quick exercise and that I can see Rashmi now every time she speaks to me after that, she's going to be just sending me boxes and things with a <laughs> hammer on top. And if that serves you, there we go. Because then, I, I mean, I can see myself doing it. Just all the, of the anger, taking it outside myself, box it, hammer it down, boom, disappear. And I, I wanted to ask everyone else, what, what do you people, I mean, what, what would you do with your anger? Quickly, I mean, Herman, if you, if you started feeling angry following what Amisha shared, what would you do? And I would love to hear from you in this as well. That's why you call me La Bestia. I see, I see now. The I beast. am the beast. I am the beast because, yeah, but I normally, yeah. I'm very... Is La Bestia the beast or the best? No, the beast. The beast. Oh, the beast. I, I, I don't know Spanish, so I thought it meant the best. I was like, yes, I would agree with that one. <laughs> yeah, it's because I treat him so badly that I am la bestia. Um, actually, when Rashmi said about the box, I thought like what, what I would like to do is like I'm feeling the, the anger. Like, it's just something like, you know, take the chewing gum from your mouth and do put it in the bin. <laughs> That's it. And leave it behind and continue walking. That was what yeah. came to mind. That's brilliant because that also, uh, now, now the box objectification in a box manner is not going to work for everybody because that's how Rashmi imagined it. And like Herman said, oh God, I'm now confused with the name. Jose, stop changing everybody's names. Yes. On it. Uh, like what Herman said, his anger was a chewing gum. Now how how easy it is to just sort of convert that emotion into an object that you know you can discard or you know you can break or you know you can shatter or you know that once it's out it's gone and it's never going to come back exactly because what i feel when rashmi said about the box i also thought about my pocket i just you know but it's like you're saving it for later i would like just to get rid of it it's okay and um, because i'm chewing the anger it's like and then i say like that and I finish with my anger, I continue walking. That's what I felt like the best way to leave it behind. Absolutely, Herman. And that's, you know, the more you carry it around you, like you said, in your pocket, if you're going to carry it around you, it's going to stay and it's going to show up and it's going to, you know, bring up all sorts of other stuff, which we don't want. The idea is to separate it from your physical body, and let it go completely. But again, while this is going to solve the situation then, like I said, you don't know what the future holds. You don't know what new triggers might come up. You don't know what new challenges may come up in the future, especially when it comes to your work, your business, right? So how do you work with that? How do you find you know, the bigger strength to keep moving on rather than giving up? I don't know if there are many people in this uh, community who have experienced those challenges where they you know, tried something and not been able to succeed and maybe they haven't get, you know, given it a go again. So there could be all sorts of things that come up and that's where developing your emotional fitness is very essential because it's never about just changing the anger into something in that moment. It's also about being able to build that resilience in yourself, you know, build that progressive focus. Uh, I know I've had my bad days and I can be honest about it because we all have them. 
um, you know, I've, I've had enough moments where I thought, give up, let's not do this, it's too hard. Uh, the self-doubt creeping in saying, okay, I can't be on a video call, you know, I can't speak to people. If I talk to people, they won't listen. All sorts of, those are high self-doubt things that come up, especially when you know you're working on your own and you've got to be visible. You've got to, you know, show up and you've got to always be your best self. So, so until you cultivate your emotional fitness and work on these aspects that come up where you start doubting yourself, you doubt your beliefs, you doubt your abilities, it becomes really hard. And for me, I know I was able to carry on thanks to the knowledge that we earned in NLP, you know, being able to apply it, being able to put it together and then narrow it down to the area of emotional fitness. Gosh, I've been, I feel I've been talking forever now. Jose has been too quiet too long. If Jose is quiet, quiet too long, then I know I've spoken too much. No, actually the opposite. You got me thinking as well. And I love the interactions with the, with the attendees. Herman and Rashmi, Eunice. I know Eunice sometimes joins, but then she's working in the background. Anyway, Eunice, if you have a question. And I can I can even hear it in when, when you speak, Amisha. You know, if we if we go, yeah, we're entrepreneurs and we've got to do this and we've got to do that, and we've got to do that. And every time we we keep on saying we got to, we got to, it's just like I feel personally, like I'm adding more load onto my shoulders, you know, and it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. So the emotional fitness is key. Some of the things you've shared, absolutely. I want to know if you have any other, let's call them tips or steps or things people could do on a daily basis to strengthen the muscle, to become fitter when it comes to this. And I also wanted to say one thing that's helped me is letting go as well. So I joined, I joined these calls and if I make a mistake or whatever happens, I just carry on. I let go because otherwise I'm just hooking on to this thing, this feeling, and then it's all inside me and I feel like I'm going to explode. And I love that. So now I'm thinking every time I hear something or I say something to myself, okay, let's just put it out on that box. I'll save that box after the call and then I smash it, for example. You see, that's gone. That's dealt with. But I can automatically just get them out of my system, out of my system, out of my system as I continue to speak and enjoy because then once we present that best version of ourselves, very human, very vulnerable, but at the same time confident, then it's impactful. So I'm loving, I'm loving the conversation. Fantastic. Co. Oh. So Amisha, over to you with those of the strategies, whatever you want to talk about. What's what's the time? How are we doing with time? Because I cannot see it for some reason with my on my we screen. are half an hour in. <clears throat> okay, cool. So we're, we're doing good. And then after this, if you want to share some of the things you've got for the community, over to you. I'm all ears. Absolutely. So I, uh, I, I don't really delve on one or the other strategy, but the thing that I do do, do um, fundamentally is I always look at two ends of the spectrum, all right? So there will be the minute one and the, mac uh, and the big one, or the um, micro and the macro seed here jose you were talking about oh if i forget something and now i've actually forgotten what i was saying you put it all out there you oh it goodness me. man that's it sorry then let's finish so the call you, so if you look at <laughs> i'm coming back into focus so so what is the micro and what is a macro okay so as a daily habit this is what i do and it works fantastically well for me and i know all of my clients who adopted it it works fantastically well for them so i'm going to share that with your community and I'm hoping that lots of you benefit from it. So the first thing is starting my day, I like to pep up my physical energy and I'm not talking about exercise or any of those things because our emotions live in our body, okay? And our body is actually carrying all of those thoughts and those feelings and everything that we've piled up for years around. And yes, while we can, we can go intensive and we can clear it all out once and for all, the fact is as we go through life, we still keep building up stuff. Okay, it's like just we, we have to have a shower every day, right? We can't just have a bath once in our life and then, you know, it's all done. So what I like to do every day is create the emotional energy through the body because we don't use our body enough for that. So the couple of things that I start my morning with is power poses. I don't know if all of you know what power poses are or if you ever try it, okay? A power pose there, Jose is demonstrating. Thank you for that, that's a superb demo, right? A power pose is just having your physiology 
in a very, very confident, uh, confident stance. Now, for Jose, the power pose is the Superman one. For me, it's just about standing in front of the mirror with my hands on my hips, which makes me feel super confident. Okay. Now, for you, your power pose might be something else. It might be, you know, this or this or whatever. I don't know what whatever makes you feel confident. There you go. Herman has the one with his camera on, right? His focus on. Yeah. So, so every every morning when you practice a power pose, you're already telling your body that I'm ready, that I am ready. Okay. Which means I'm confident, I'm ready. So even if things do come up, you're not getting sucked into them. You're in a state to handle them. You're in a state to focus and find the solutions. Okay? Rather than sort of getting derailed. And the other thing that I do on the more macro side of it is at the end of the day, just reflect back. Saying, okay, how many things did I do well? How many things were on point based on what I needed to do for my business? How many things can I improve on? Okay, so the reflection has to be on what I did well and what can I improve on? It never, word of warning, red flag, never focus on what, what did I do wrong? Okay, because that puts the mind into a negative state and those negative states can create negative emotions. Right? So first thing is every morning power posing. It doesn't take long to, it, it doesn't take long. All you need to do is Jose, Superman pose. How long did it take to have a Superman pose and pick up your, lift your energy up for you? Yeah, nothing. It just, it, it, it just happens. I mean, I'm doing the Superman, but just, just by doing this, stretching, taking a deep breath. For me, it's actually taking a deep breath and ah, uh, stretching us, opening up. Then I'm, I'm connecting with that bit. So yeah. it's just finding, as you said, Amisha, you have the, you know, hands around your hips. It's just inviting people, you know, just what, what are, what are yours? Because it is powerful. You can change the state. I know for some people it's just sitting up straight. It's just, yeah. 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 So, so the reason I'm talking about the morning and the power posing in the morning is that you're starting your day in that state. And we know that when we start things well, it usually goes well, right? So if you start your day, I mean, do your exercises and whatever else you do for your physical fitness, but from the point of raising your whole emotional state so that it carries you through your day, power posing is a big one, okay? So for me, the power posing is about the hands on the hips. Uh, and I know a lot of women like it. The men like, you know, Jose was demonstrating might, might, might just be having to sit upright or stand upright or stretch or whatever it is that works for you because we, we just all think differently. So you can find a power pose that works for you, okay? Uh, there are many, many ways to do it, but find something that makes you feel confident. The element of a power pose is that your shoulders need to be upright, your back needs to be upright, you know, your, your neck and your chin in a decent distance from your, uh, sorry, your chin and your neck have a decent distance. So you're not too high, not too low. Okay, so those are the elements of your power posing. Uh, so that's creating your emotional energy. And at the end of the day, reflect back in terms of what did I do well? Because that is your inventory to carry on. You know, when you think about and reflect back on what did I do well? Those are the things that start creating the good neurotransmitters. You know, the dopamine, the serotonin, the oxytocin, all of that starts getting generated when you think about, ah, I did this really well. You know, like, oh, I remembered to do this on time or, oh, I made sure that I completed this particular task. Whatever it may be that you're doing with your business, however minute it may be, however small it may be, acknowledge it. Focus and acknowledge it. Because that starts to give you the motivation to carry on the next day. Okay, and if something didn't go well, okay, just what can I improve on? That's it. Because when you focus on improvement, you're always focusing on doing better, being better. You're not focusing on reprimanding. So those are reframes that we use in NLP. Jose knows all about them. Uh, you know, rather than talking about failure, we talk about feedback. Okay. Boom. 
Is that go. helpful? Well, is that helpful, people? And Amisha, I wanted to ask you because I know you always, well, you always, yes, I know you do, have different resources and things you make available for people, downloads and things like that. Yes. Have you got anything around this or would you like to share some of the different resources you have available? And then what we'll do, we'll email them over to everyone who signed up for this session today and to the yeah. community and we can post them or you can also post them on the on the community. So just sharing, sharing is caring because uh, I know this is powerful. Yes, it is. So I can share uh, my website. I'm just going to put that up for you. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Share away. There we go. Okay. So I have a portal or my learning vault on imemotionallyfit.com. Now, this portal has a lot of resources, um, which helps you to connect with uh, me through into my community, but that's not the idea. It also helps you to make a free call, uh, set up a free call with me in case you want to have any assessments. But more than anything, it also has a free hub where you've got a whole load of information over there in terms of PDFs, downloads, training videos. So depending on how you like to learn, if you like to learn through PDFs and Worksheets, those are available. If you like to watch videos and learn, those are available. So feel free to create a free account on it. It's available to everybody. And the main thing that I wanted to also share is an upcoming program uh, called Ready to Thrive. So in case anybody is uh, happy, uh, wants to invest some time, uh, I would love to have you on that program. And I'm going to share a little more about it with the gang uh, ready to thrive where are we Jose can I give you the link instead of putting yeah, it up on ab the absolutely screen? yeah send, send us yeah there you have it people yeah. there you have the link and Rashmi if you could copy and then use that one uh, send it out as one of the resources that Amisha will be sharing when we send an email with a recording to this amazing community thank you so much Amisha for that you are very welcome. So, so Ready to Thrive is a seven-day bootcamp program, and it incorporates all of the elements that I use uh, personally as well as with clients to make sure that you are ready in, in your emotional state, in your physical state, in your mental state to receive the success that you are working towards. And it's just seven days, not too much, not too long worthwhile in terms of time and investment. So we're not spending the rest of our life, but if we just take seven days and get ourselves ready, everything else starts moving forward really quickly. So that is the nature of the program. And I want everybody to thrive, of course. I love that, ready to thrive. There we go, people. You, you see, sometimes I just don't know what else to do because I think everything that we bring to this show is amazing. And I also love the, the passion of course, your passion, Amisha, and the passion we all bring to this community and the caring and the, the spirit of support that we all carry with ourselves as well. Amisha, it's been a pleasure. I mean, I, I love the whole session. And I also missed speaking with you because in the past we used to speak more often. I know we're busy here and doing more things. So having this space here has been fantastic. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask you, you've shared some links and things that people can take action on. Any final thoughts for the community, for those entrepreneurs, business owners that are going a bit crazy like myself every day? Good crazy, as I like to say, but you know, maybe there's something we can change. There is definitely something we can change. Any final words? Final words are, if you're on this journey, you must have made the right decision and stick with it and just work on whatever comes up. Don't change your plans and don't go back. Don't stumble over what you went past. You know, there was a saying thing saying, don't stumble over what you went past. I love you you that. can't, right? It's not possible, but we all no, do exactly. when we're in our heads. So, so if you're here, you're on this journey, as I say, you've made that choice, you made the con uh, you know, that confident choice. So keep carrying on. I love it. I love it, people. Wow. What a way to finish this today. Amisha, thank you so very, very much for this. 
thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity to talk to this wonderful community of yours and to your whole team Jose and people remember la best it what say say I'm la best. best I was going to say la best not la best yeah the best okay well we stick <laughs> we stick with the best people thank you so much Amisha thank you for your time thank you for all the resources we will be sharing all of this via email as well feel free to keep on engaging with the community whenever you want to do a live share a few things what you're up to please do so we would love to well we love having awesome. you within the community and I see someone is approaching my door so maybe yeah I think my wife is about to knock on the door So I'm going to go and open that for her. Otherwise, she's going to get very upset. And then I'm going to have to put all of her anger in that box and smash it, which we can do fairly quickly now. People, <laughs> I'll let you all go. Yeah. Amisha, big love. Thank you very, very much. Herman, La Bestia, Rashmi, La Bestia. Yunis, people watching this on replay. Remember, keep on joining the Speak to Sell show. Benefit from the resources. Go on to the Facebook community. Check out all the different guides, the speaking tips and much more. And you can always book a call with me, Herman. As part of the browsing marketing business that we run together, we're running some incredible promotions for your social media artworks and designs. Mm -hmm. Over to you, people. See you all very soon. All the very best. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you very much, Amisha. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.